This is Witches, Bitches, and Dead People with Intuitive Oracle, Jamie Hearn. Jamie stirs the cauldron with witches, shamans, healers, psychics, and mediums who bravely share their power and give you insight into what conversations with dead people really look like. It's probably not what you think. Sometimes hilarious, sometimes macabre, and always informative. Hello and welcome back to Witches, Bitches, and Dead People. I'm Jamie Hearn, and today I'm super excited to chat with Lynn Nichols. She's a psychic medium, intuitive expert with clientele worldwide. Her specialty is connecting to the other side and showing people how to access their intuition to enhance their lives. Lynn's ability to provide specific and meaningful messages makes her one of Canada's top psychic mediums. Lynn has been featured on TV, radio, and many podcasts for her expertise. She sells out messaging shows, does corporate large group intuition trainings, and does private readings. So I'm super excited what we're going to chat about today. Welcome, Lynn. Thank you. Yeah, you never know. You never know what's going to come up. Right? Right. So tell us your tell us your story. When did you first realize that you might know stuff that other people don't? Um, and that's just it, Jamie. That's exactly what you said. It's like, why do I know that? Why did I know that was going to happen? But at a young age, when you're brought up in a good old Catholic church going family, you just don't talk about that. You don't do that. But the one thing that does stand out, and I, I, I've said this before, I've mentioned this story before, is when I was about 12, I shared a room with my sister and one night the bed started shaking. So you got, you got to realize this was in the 80s and the exorcist had come out <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh shit, like what now what? So I checked under the bed for my dog. Maybe he was bouncing around. No. Okay. And it stopped. And then it came back the next night and the next night until I finally said, how do I get this to stop? And a little boy that I could see through walked up to my bed and he said, my daddy killed us all and then he killed himself. Can you help us get there? And he pointed and I, I don't know what he was talking about, but in hindsight, I'm thinking that was the other side, the light, yeah, whatever, whatever you want to call it. I said, I'm 12. <laughs> I don't know how to do this. And he said, I'll show you. So he showed me and it was basically having a, a conversation with him, his three siblings, his mother, and the father was the toughest and crossing them over. And a few days later, you know, the bed had stopped, short, stopped shaking. He did apologize for shaking the bed. He knows it scared me. <laughs> but he came back and he said, you know, thank you so much. We're happy. I have a gift for you. And I'm like a teenager in the 80s. I thought it was like a Nintendo or something cool like right. that. And I would never say I have a gift because I believe everybody has this ability. But it, it, it was at that point where I started knowing things more, uh, seeing things more. Nothing spooky. I've never run into anything in, terribly scary, but that was the beginning of it. And I knew they had my back because things would happen where, you know, for example, I, I had a friend's boyfriend that always liked to come over to play video games. And I would just sit there going, oh my gosh, this is driving me batty and I feel bad because my friend's not here. And as soon as I said that, he walked outside and his bike had gotten stolen right out of my backyard. Not that I would like that for happen, but to happen to him, but little things like that were, gave me the feeling that I was being protected. So yeah. that makes me feel good. Not, I don't want anybody's bike to be stolen or anything bad to happen, but it was, it was nice. Right. I mean, it, it, it was really kind of inconsequential, but moved some energy for you. Right. It, absolutely. Yes. Yes. That's super cool. I find it so interesting that this little boy was like, listen, I've got something to help you. You need to help me. Let's roll, sister. Yeah, absolutely. Let's let's all put our noggins together and see what we can come up with. Yeah. So do you ever feel that same little boy energy around you? Not often. And and honestly, I didn't tell anybody for many, many, many years. And probably till about 
maybe five, six years ago. And my cousin who lived beside us in the house beside us at the time, as soon as she heard me say that, she called me right away and she said, did you, do you know what that boy's name is? And I said, yeah, why? She said, was it Leo? And I said, oh my gosh, yeah. She said, because I would see him too. And I just, she said, I've never told anybody that. She, but the way I described him with his cute, curly, blonde, brown hair, <laughs> she was like, I knew who it was. So I'm assuming they were a family that lived in the area many, many yeah. years before we did. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. It, it's kind of validating that your cousin, who never talked about it, also had a very similar experience. Right, right. Yeah, I was in awe of that. And I just, I thought it was the coolest thing. So how did you make the transition into doing this professionally? That's a good question. Um, because I was a teacher. You know, you grow up, you're a teenager, you discover boys, you go to school, you do the right thing. So I was a teacher for many, many years. And if you can imagine teaching a classroom full of 25 some odd children and all their grandparents are coming in. <laughs> anyway, that was entertaining. But in two, I always say 2005 was like my 2020. So in that year, government changed. My job got deemed redundant. So I was done. I could have supply top, but we all know how that goes. Uh, my uncle died, my best friend died, and then my grandmother and my mother died all in that year. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So all these things happened and I'm not one to boo-hoo, but I was boo-hooing. And sure. I, so yeah. So That's what, a lot. what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And I said, you know what? I'll, I'll try. I love doing readings. I love that whole realm. I'll try doing that. And if I, if it doesn't work, then I'll go back to teaching supply teaching. Ugh. And within three months, I didn't have to teach anymore. I was booked <laughs> solid. And that was in 2005. And now I'm booked up for this entire year. Wow. So amazing. I, I, yeah, I'm usually booked a year in advance. <clears throat> and so it just transitioned out of necessity, really. And then I found that it just made me feel sounds so it sounds like a terrible pun made me feel alive. When I talk to the dead. <laughs> I totally understand that though. Okay. Like, I can remember when I, I first found some people that understood I'd go to these groups and it was late on a Thursday night and it was far away from where I lived. So I'd get in the car driving home and I'd call my husband and I swear he was snoring on the other end of the phone. But I'm like, <laughs> and then this happened and then this, and then I saw this and then like, it was just so exciting. It is. And it's, I've been doing it for like, oh gosh, I can't do the math, but over 15 years. And to this day, every day, like you said, something super cool happens and it yeah. just makes you feel so good. So it, it's a little selfish of me that I do this because it makes me feel good, but but why not? Why not have a job you love? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, do you ever have an experience where you don't pay attention to what they're saying? And what happens if that comes up? Oh, boy. Yeah, that's <clears throat> if I'm doing a reading with someone and I, I, I only deal with the good spirits. I don't deal with anything spooky or scary. They're very insistent. They just keep going and going and going. So I have learned to just say whatever comes up. Uh, but, but I do have a story of the one day I was walking my dog and in my head, I, you know how intuition comes in so quickly and quietly, we ignore it. And here I am saying, listen to your intuition. And I heard, go down that road. I was like, I'm, not, I'm just gonna go this way, the way I usually go. I'm gonna walk my dog this way, which I should have gone that way <laughs> because we crossed the street and she just started sniffing furiously and she went over and a bee came right out of the ground, bit her in the nose. Aww. And I was like, and then her cute little face went all pop. It was kind of cute. Come on. But I should have gone that way. It would have avoided this pain for my little dog. So I felt like a piece of shit. But <laughs> I mean, I've had a similar experience where just at Thanksgiving of last year, yeah. My son and I were going to our farm and I thought I should wear hiking boots. And then I thought, nah, I don't feel like digging them out. And I sprained my ankle. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> and 
So when, as I limp home, I'm like, I should have listened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, and I, but I will never tell any of my clients to do as I say. I will never say, do, do what I'm, do what I'm saying, do what I'm talking about because they have to trust their own intuition. Yeah. And it's not our job to take their free will. No. Right. That's yeah. That's exactly the word I was searching for in my brain is I can tell you what I'm getting. I can tell you the options, but I won't tell you to do this. Yeah. Uh, well, so actually sometimes I will because that teacher in me comes out and says, okay, <laughs> if you try this, this will be fantastic and you'll love it so much. <laughs> um, but yeah, they have free will. So trust your gut, trust what you know you feel is right for you and head in that direction yeah I find myself saying that to clients a fair amount when they ask what should I do should I do this mm -hmm. I tell them hey look this is the guidance that I'm getting for you but you have free will so you need to make that decision yourself right, right. based on what's going on for you yeah 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 good answer so what's one of the coolest stories you have about either uh, an interaction you've had with spirit or something you've brought through for someone else? Oh, let's see. Oh, it's hard to pick. Uh, just this week has been, has been interesting, but oh, I've got one. This is, goes back several years to when my kids were young and we decided to go out east in, in Canada. That's the Maritimes camping. So we went out east and we found this campground and all the campground workers were on strike at the time. So it was basically just go pick a site. If it's empty, take it. So we went and we got half set up with our tent. We had a tent at the time across from the washroom. I thought this is great because, you know, the kids get up in the middle of the night. You can just send them over. We don't have to walk them to the bathroom, blah, blah, blah. Halfway set up. And I said, we, we can't stay here. And my husband at the time, well, now my ex-husband was what? everything's out of the truck and you want us to move. We need to move. We need to move. And I didn't know why, but we needed to move. So we moved begrudgingly. So dragging a half put up tent about a football field away. And in the middle of the night, we start hearing help, help is we need a doctor. And I was like, okay, where's that coming from? And so the kids were still asleep. My husband got up and he looked out. We couldn't see anybody, so we waited, and then we could hear the sirens, the you know, the fire trucks, the ambulance. They end up at the washroom where we were right across from, and it was just so much commotion. So, first of all, we would have had to try and sleep through this. And I peeked out of the tent and went, oh, Okay, I'm getting up. So, I sat at the picnic table. My son ended up getting up, he was younger. And I looked over at the fire trucks and I saw this man peek around the side of a fire truck and locked eyes with me. And I was like, uh oh, I could see through him. And it, it, he came over like out of a cartoon or a superhero movie and just went and sat right beside me on the picnic table, put his elbows on his knees and just went, I think I died. I said, oh, OK. He said, I just died. I had a heart attack in the shower and there's blood everywhere. I, oh my goodness. And I'm thinking, my son's not noticing. I'm thinking I'm losing my mind because maybe <laughs> I'm too tired. He said, can you tell Margaret I'm okay? I'm like, oh, who's Margaret? My wife. Okay. Okay. And he says, okay, I got to go. I'm going there. And he points, just like Leo pointed to all those years <laughs> back. And, I was, and I'm looking for something. I see nothing. And then my husband comes back because he had to be nosy and go check out what was going on. He says, you're not going to believe what happened. I said, did an older man about like 65, 70 have a heart attack in the shower and fall and there's blood everywhere? And he said, ah, shit. Yes. Yes, that happened. <laughs> so it was it was like, oh, OK, that's that's the big story that always stands out to me because it because I don't normally see them like that. So that was that was pretty interesting. I usually hear them and feel that they're in the room or feel that they're in the area, but yeah. only, only when I'm working, I'm not going to go to the mall and have a panic attack. Cause there's all these spirits attacking me. It's off. It's absolutely. Oh, actually, off. But my teacher had a funny experience in the mall. Uh -oh. um, a, a child came to her and 
said, I've lost my mom. Can you help me? Mm. And she didn't see them as transparent. So she's Uh kneeling down talking to this little boy and a crowd was starting to form and her husband came over and bumped her and said, dead. And she was like, oh. Oh, goodness. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) At least he knew. (laughs) Wow. Yeah, it's funny how they find us Mm -hmm. when they need us most. So did you talk to Margaret then? No, uh, (laughs) I didn't. So what was I going to do? It was like one in the morning. (laughs) So so I understand. Yeah. So I didn't. And then he kind of paid me a little visit the next night and said, I don't think you talked to my wife. I said, oh, honey, I'm so sorry. I I can't find her. I don't know who she is. Without saying, I'm going to come across as a total kook. So I, I, I didn't. But I'm just, I just kind of hoped and wish that she knew. Because <laughs> I, I, at that point, it was before I was really doing this. So I, I, I wasn't comfortable. Yeah. Well, even now, there are certain circumstances that I'm not comfortable just walking up to someone being like, so are you, Margaret? <laughs> no. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I remember once I was at, um, <clears throat> I, don't, I think you call it the DMV, where you go get your license. Or, yeah. And um, I was getting my, I don't know, my license renewed or something. And the lady's father was standing behind her. And, oh, no. He, and this is, again, before I really started doing it for work. And he said, tell her, tell her Chico's here. Like, oh, frig. So I'm trying to ignore him. And he just was pushing and pushing just, but nicely tell her Chico's here. And I said to the lady, I am so sorry. I'm not trying to drum up business. I just forget you've even seen me, but I, I can see things that other people can't. And there's a, a man here that says, tell her Chico's here. She says, I don't, first of all, I got the look of, oh, okay. Like, who the hell are you? <laughs> yeah, we're going to get you a nice little white jacket that makes you hug yourself. So, and she's, I don't know a Chico. I said, okay, buddy, she doesn't know who you are. And then I, he said, tell her Jamie. Oh, boy. I said, he, he knows Jamie. And the, her daughter's name was Jamie, like yours. <laughs> and so it's funny, I'm telling this story when I normally don't. And she looked at me like, are you stalking my child? I said, honestly, I don't, I don't know who this is. And then she went, oh, my goodness. When Jamie was little, she used to call my dad Chico because she couldn't say his name. So, and then, so she starts crying. The lady, the other working lady beside her leans in is like, are you okay? Because she thought maybe I was bullying her or something. And she says, yeah, she just blah, 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 blah. And then that lady's dead mother shows up. And I said, who's so-and-so? And And she says, that's my mother. She starts crying. (laughs) And you're like, I just want to get my life. (laughs) That's all I want to do. And so everybody, everybody in line is looking like what's going on. The manager came over and I was like, okay, this is why I don't do it like that. I don't do that in public. I'm not the Long Island medium. I will not do that because right. it's, it, this strange shit happens. <laughs> so, so it's off. Yeah. I, one time I was in a dressing room okay. and I was being inundated (laughs) and I was arguing out loud with my guides I was like no I am not telling her that no go away stop it (laughs) and someone knocked on the door they're like are you okay man oh my goodness (laughs) and I did end up telling the girl like what she apparently really needed and then she followed me to my car and it got weird and you know I don't like to do that either yeah yeah it does get weird so, yeah, and, and like uh, once I went to get my eyes tested for glasses and the lady says, you know, you know, she's filling out the form and what do you do for work? I'm a medium. A what? I said, well, I can I can connect with the other side. Oh, I don't believe in that. So a lot of people have feel in their full right to say, oh, I don't believe in that. And I was in a bit of a pissy mood that day. I said, well, I don't believe in what you do anyways. And she said, what? So I'm, I'm going to test your eyes. Well, yeah, I don't get it. So she, okay. So it goes on and she does the eye thing. And she said, um, is there anything you can tell me to prove you can do what you do? Oh my gosh. 
And again, I was in the bad mood. <laughs> Can you prove me, prove to me that you actually looked at my eyes properly? I, I said, I said, no, I'm sorry. I don't, I can't. It's not, and I say it, and which is true. If I'm not working, it's not on. Mm -hmm. So, but she didn't felt, you know, very free to say, I don't believe in it, but still wanted to know. Right. And I get it. I get the curiosities there. But I, if I was in a better mood, I might have said something. <laughs> but, but I do get a lot of, I don't believe in that. And now it's just like, that's okay. I don't believe in a lot of things either. And I honestly don't. And I said, you can believe what you want to believe. It just don't, don't try and force it on anybody. That's all. I find I get a lot of people who are very <clears throat> entrenched in religious programming who say to me, I don't believe in that. Yeah. And I want to say, but you believe in the droll and drivel that you've gotten from people that you don't know who have absolutely no <laughs> concern about you and who you are. You run with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have. I've had people, a couple people uh, tell me I talk to demons. It's like, oh, really? And I said, well, what about this that happened? Say, and just bringing forth a story about maybe mom wanting to connect. Well, demons can uh, project themselves as mothers and, and just to lure us in. I'm like, okay, so you know what? We're going to just have to agree to disagree. And she she's known me now for at least seven years. And she's like, I don't think you talk to demons. <laughs> I, said, I can guarantee I don't. <laughs> Right. <laughs> why, why would I said to her, why would anyone allow that into their life? Why, why would you? So, yeah. And then, right. and then she went on, then she went on to say something like, well, I can, I can, I have a skill too. I know that you're a very sad person. Oh, I think you're projecting here. Like, <laughs> so you, I can't have a gift or an ability. Sorry. I can't have an ability, but you can have an ability. I don't get it. And that's when we had to agree to disagree. So I find it fascinating to see where those thought processes come from. Like what happened or what created that? I'm just, yeah. I, I am always curious. Yeah. And, and but, yeah, I don't, I don't know. And I'm not saying there's anything against being religious, but just, just don't push it on other people. And I'm, I'm not pushing what I do on other, other people. I'm not, I just sit here. <laughs> no. Well, I find with some of my students, they say to me, well, how do I get them to believe me? And I, I always tell them it's not your job to convince yeah. anyone. Right. Right. Yeah. You, you don't have to prove yourself. And if they don't want to believe that's okay. I had a, um, a fella come in probably in his late 50s, early 60s. He's a very well-educated lawyer. And he was only coming to see me because all the ladies in his office came to see me. So he literally threw his money at me and said, I'm writing this off as entertainment and sat down. Well, he was there for a half an hour reading, which turned into, thank goodness I had nothing else to do, turned into a two-hour reading because I was bringing up things about cases and names and cases nobody knew about and so he's getting all this inside information and he's like okay so it was more than entertainment I get it I get it so you know I'm a lawyer by education right I did not know that I, I did. am oh that's funny <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah I just but very well educated like not gonna you know you're not gonna change this guy's mind no offense lawyers have very strong minds and that's yeah. a good quality and it was changed within half an hour easily. So if I'm, I'm not saying I could change everybody's mind. And I honestly don't set out to do that because every, everybody's entitled to be who they are. Like Absolutely. You said, hey, you said it before, you have free will. Be who you are, believe what you want to believe. and But don't judge anybody based on what they believe. So I have a question off topic. Yes. Have you noticed your abilities showing up in any of your children oh that's not off topic at all well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it leaves the clients and goes to yeah that's true okay I gotcha um yes but my my son is a very scientific boy he's he's doing his PhD in astronomical physics or something I don't understand something physics related uh, but when he was little we would have the same dream it was weird or he would 
he would say things and they would happen. Just out of the blue, when he was young, he used to have a friend, a friend, quote unquote, named Marcus, the funny man that lived in our house, who I didn't see. <laughs> and when he was little, the one night he wasn't, he, he wasn't sleeping. He was not crying, but he just wouldn't sleep. I'm like, oh my goodness, please settle, please settle. I just want to sleep. And I was sleeping in my bed. My husband wasn't there at the time. And there, so <clears throat> half the space of his, his space in the bed was open. And so finally I said, okay, hon, come sleep, you know, come sleep in mommy's bed, come sleep here. So he crawled in and then he looked up. He said, now this, he's not even two. He was barely one. He looked up and he said, funny man, which is what he called him. Funny man said, one, zero, five, nine, time to sleep. And he went to sleep. And I sat up, I said, what? And it was 10.59 on the clock behind him that he couldn't see. <laughs> so he would do neat stuff like that. My daughter is very artistic. And one day she drew this, we were driving to, um, we we're driving out east again. So we were driving across this bridge through a massive city. And she says, mommy, this is my drawing. And she flipped back a bunch of pages and she handed me her sketchbook. She was about four or five. And what I was looking at on her sketchbook that she drew a few weeks before was exactly the scene we were looking at. Cool. Yeah. And nowadays, now that she's, he, my son doesn't do it at all. He won't even, he says, I'm a professional schizophrenic. I hear voices and I make money doing it. But he doesn't denounce it. He just doesn't bother with it. My daughter and he likes to tease his mama. <laughs> obviously, my daughter can sense. She gets very anxious when somebody is going to die. Mm -hmm. Like it could be a neighbor. If she doesn't doesn't even need to know that, but she gets very panicky for no reason. And then within within about twelve hours, somebody dies. Mm -hmm. so she, now she doesn't do it professionally by any means but she probably could it's it's interesting to see how these souls have come in to learn from us and in my experience surpassed me so quickly my son is 18 mm -hmm. and he's been connected and open his entire life cool he's not shy about saying yeah do you see the little girl in the corner ma oh my goodness. <laughs> like, no, tell me about it. He's like, she says you're her mother, but I told her back off. She's <laughs> mine in this lifetime. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> That's so cute. But it's it's amazing to see how their journeys flow from this. And mm -hmm. even if your son is not doing it, it is still a part of who he is. Oh, absolutely. And and I think that um, and I was the same before I got control of it is that, you know, the kids do have a lot of anxiety and, and depression. And I'm not saying it's solely because of this, but I think they're very empathic and they pick up on a lot of stuff and they don't know they are. And I remember being a nervous wreck until I finally said, okay, I do not want to deal with this unless I'm actually working. And it was quiet and better and calmer. So not that I'm a mess when I'm working. I'm not at all. It's just at least then I can focus. And... Right. Then you're open to receive it. You yeah. don't need all of that inundation of, of emotion and energy otherwise. No, because like you said, they always find us. They always seem to find like moths to a flame. We must have some kind of beacon that says, come see me. Come see I'm, me. I'm pretty sure that's true. Yeah. <laughs> So if people want to learn about your offerings and what you teach the world, where can they find you? So they can find me on my website, which is lynnnichols.com. But it, it's just a very rudimentary website. It's just basically to get in touch with me to book appointments and stuff. I have Instagram, which is lynnnichols underscore intuition expert. And Facebook is lynnnichols dash intuition expert. And I have a TikTok thing by the same name and YouTube shorts and stuff. But Basically, Instagram and Facebook are, are where you can connect with me more, most easily. And I do some intuition stuff there, like teaching you how to use your intuition. And then I get caught up in some of the fun, funky filters and jump through holes in the floor and all that, you know, kind of neat stuff. So I like to educate. I like, I love to entertain. And I'm doing a big show tonight, which I'm excited about. So, ooh, exciting. Mm -hmm. 
They're my favorite things to do. Awesome. Well, I'm sending you lots of supportive and loving energy for your show tonight. I'm sure it's going to be amazing. Thank you. And I'll send it right back to you for whatever you need it for. (laughs) Well, thank you. You're welcome. It's been great getting to know you. I love your energy. And I think that our audience will agree. And I'd love to keep in touch with you. That sounds like an excellent plan. Thank you. And I hope everybody enjoyed listening and listening to the stories and seriously take, not seriously, but take a look inside yourself and see how you can use your intuition to make your life better and your family's life better. Because that's what it's all about, creating the life you want. Absolutely. I love that. That's the perfect sentiment to end our week on. So thank you everyone for listening. Peace and badass magic. Thank you for listening to Witches, Bitches, and Dead People with Jamie Hearn. If you like what you heard, please subscribe, rate, and review at Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen in. 